So that is, that is a simple question on an equist. And I want us to see if we can remember how to get the gain margin, the face margin, and uh, uh, to determine whether the system is stable or not. So the first thing that uh, you're supposed to do, remember we did say that uh, when you are dealing with stability, especially when you are talking about uh, the stability using the Nyquist stability method, then we usually plot the gain in ratio form, and then we have the angles. And these are all supposed to be plotted on uh, what we refer to as uh, the Nyquist diagram or the polar plot. And if you, if you remember, the polar plot looks like this. And it starts with zero here, minus 90. All the angles are always minus because they are all angles of lag. Uh, minus, no, it should start with zero here, minus 90. Then here we have minus 180. Then from there we have 360. No, not really 360, but 270. This will seem to make a silent, eh? 360. So that is what uh, we are supposed to have. And of course, there are circles here that we are going to use as our scales. Uh, so that is uh, what uh, we have. Another thing that is also very, very important to remember is that uh, when you talk about the Nyquist, the, not, not, not only the Nyquist, but all stability methods, uh, the stability is always obtained at the point 1.0. That is a very, very important point. And another point, that is for the gain ratio. For the gain ratio, it is always obtained at 1.0. And for the angles, it is al always obtained at minus 180. So it is always very, very important that whenever you are plotting in order to obtain stability, then you must ensure that uh, an, a value under the gain ratio plot, a value under the gain ratio plot, you should have a value that is slightly uh, more than one. Like in this case, we are talking about uh, here, it's very bigger than one. So the next value is 1.3. So at 1.3, we'll be able to obtain uh, the stability. The other point that we are going to look at is that we must ensure that an angle of 180, so we go to a slightly bigger angle, which from the plot is uh, 200, so we can only plot this up to here. So you don't need this because the only thing that they will do is to ensure to, 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 to increase the scale value, the, the value of the scale uh, of the polar plot, but uh, they're not going to aid you in determining stability. So we are going to ignore the last two parts. So we are going to start from 1.3, 0.9, 0.7, and the respective, the respective values here. Sawa, sawa. Good. So from there, we are going to plot. We are now going to plot. And what you are supposed to do is, the first thing that uh, you're supposed to do is to have a scale. So if you have a scale, if you look at uh, the Nyquist plot, eh? if you look at the Nyquist plot, it has got 10. 10 values, if you look at that. 10 small circles, huh? Send you. It has got 10 small circles. So we want a value that it has got 10 small circles, and we want a value that is, uh, is going to cover 0 0.3. So if we say that each small circle represents 0 0.1, we are not going to achieve that, huh? Send you. Because uh, uh, 0 0.1, is actually, if, if we do that, then we are going to have 1.0 as the maximum value in that scale. So what we can do, we can talk of 0 0.2. So maybe you can make a scale here, so that each is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and so on. So you can, you can do that. Then after you've done that, 
Then now you are going to look at the angles. Of course, if you look at the divisions, they are such that there is a difference of 10 degrees each. So they are upon it 10, 20, 30, until you get to 90. So that one also you can write so that uh, it reminds you on when you are going to plot. It will be very, very important for you to write the angles along those particular uh, divisions uh, so that uh, you get uh, the values, so, so that when you will be plotting, you will easily know where to plot, especially if you don't have a pair of compass. But I always advise that uh, you should always have a pair of compass when you are plotting this. So the first thing that you are going to look at is after the division, after having a scale, and the scale you should have it on the right hand side, after having that scale, then you are going to measure 1.3 from your scale. 1.3 from your scale, and then the angle. So we talk of that angle of around 140. So maybe the angle is here. So I'll have 1.3. Let's say 1.3 is there. Then transfer it to the angle 140. Then after transferring that, I will have to write the corresponding frequency, which in this case is 4. Write the corresponding frequency, which in this case is 4. You go to the other one, 0 0.9. Get 0 0.9 from your scale. The corresponding angle is 149. Draw maybe you have a line here, 149. You can approximate uh, because the values are already there, already there. 149, 0 0.9. Again, you do that for 0 0.7. Uh, you must write the corresponding frequency. So in that case, the corresponding frequency is 5. The other one is... Uh, 0 0.7 and 6, and then after doing that, you will just join them freehand. You just join them freehand by using uh, Nyquist. By, by using, uh, uh, you, you don't use a ruler, just join freehand. Then from there, you will be able to get the gain margin and the face margin. Now, when you come to the gain margin, when you come to the gain margin, you should always uh, get uh, the gain margin from the value here, so just, just like, uh, let's say, this is our plot. So this is what we have. Then you have a graph like that. So the gain margin is always found by measuring this distance and then getting the exact distance here. Transfer it to the scale, then get the measurement. Then the gain margin will be given by 20 log to base 10 of 1 all over that distance x. That is the gain margin. So when you come to the face margin, the face margin will be given by extend here. You will, uh, after you, have, you shall have drawn this, you will draw what we refer to as a unity circle. Unity circle is a circle of one, a radius one, according to the scale here. So you will draw that. So assuming that this is the unity circle that we have drawn, So we are going to get this angle, this angle here, then subtract it from 180. So it is 180 minus this angle. You, we count from zero there. So if this angle is maybe say uh, Z, then 180 minus Z will give us what we refer to as the face margin. Depending on whether they are going to be positive or negative, that one will determine whether the system is stable or not. If it is going to be positive, if both the face margin and the gain margin are positive, then we can say that that particular system is stable. Sawa sawa. So don't, when you are getting the face margin, it is always 180 minus this angle that you are going to add. Ignore the positive values because these positive values simply show that these are angles of lag. Sawa sawa. So you don't need to start having minus 180, minus, minus. No, it is simply take it as 180 because it is an angle of lag minus that value Z that you are going to measure from here. Then from there, you are 
able to obtain face margin. So what's more? You can try that. I don't want you to I don't want to give you the answer but what I want you to know is that face margin is here 14180 what you see one is here so one is between 1.3 and 0 0.9 so the moment you are going to get an angle that is bigger than 40 and is less than 31 eh? then you know that you are out of what you are supposed to get. Eh? So the most important thing, I don't want now, I am not going to give you answers, eh? but what is important is that you know what you are supposed to do. So in this case, if you have 1.3 and 0 0.9, so you will know that this one is between that. Eh? So if you look at the angles, the angle that is in between there is 142, 149. So from there, that one will guide you so that when you are obtaining the face magic, you are able to get the, what is within that range. Eh? The same with this. If you look at that, in fact, this is now exact. You have 0 0.3 and 180. Remember, we said that there are two important points as far as stability is concerned. We have the point where you have 180 degrees. At the point where we have 180 degrees, we usually get the gain margin. Right? And the gain margin is always gotten as the reciprocal of that particular gain ratio. And then we convert it into decibel. So don't give your gain margin in ratio form. So it has to be 20 log to base 10 of 1 over 0 0.3. And if you look at that, 8 is already there. If we would have had 1 here, then it would have also been direct. Right? I think we can do another one. Then we close. So again, you have been given those, that particular table, and you're supposed to know, uh, to determine whether the system is stable or not. Again, we look at uh, the two important points. We know, we've talked about the two important points for the ratio. It has to exceed one so that we determine where one is. And for the face angle of the, of course you see that these angles are now positive because I've replaced I've used the word lag here that one makes them to be positive because we've said that they are all angles of lag so when you look at that uh, considering one then the value that is slightly bigger than one is 1.1 and then when you come to the angles for us to get uh, the gain margin 
180, so we go to the R value that is slightly bigger than 180, and therefore we will start from here and plot those values. If you plot those values, you will be able to obtain your gain margin and face margin. So if you do that, again from that, 0, 90, 180, 270, of course they are 10. Again, you divide your scale equally, of which we, all read, we again have 1.1. So if you have 1.1, again 0.1 will be 1, which is slightly smaller than 1.1. So we can talk of 0.2. So each is 0 0.2. So 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.2. So we can talk of that. After looking at that, we again now take the values where 1.1 is, get the value of 1.1, let's say it is here, 1.1, and then the angle is 166. So to Nakuja, we come to that, 1.1, 166. Maybe we can talk of that. And you must write the frequency, which is two rads per second. The main reason why you are supposed to write these frequencies is because you will use them in order to determine both the voice and gain crossover frequencies by simply interpolation. Then you go to 0 0.83 again, and 174. So let's say 0 0.8 is there, and 174 is there. So here, again, we have to write the corresponding frequency, which is 2.2. And we do that for all this as we write those particular values. Then after you finish that again, you draw what we refer to as the unity circle. Unity circle. And maybe where unity circle, where unity circle, maybe you can come up with something like that. Where the unity circle touches, where the unity circle touches the locus, you get the angle there. And you start from zero. Then 180 minus that particular angle that you are going to measure from there will give you what we call the face margin. Then the distance from here to that the scale, using the scale, don't use the ruler for centimeters, or you must use the scale. So that distance that you are going to use here, of which uh, you measure with the, by use of the scale that you had made before, will give you uh, the distance x. And then to get uh, uh, the gain margin, it will be 20 log to the 10 of x, of which this one is also very, very direct. If you look at it again, 180 is there, so this one is going to be, uh, this is going to be, it should be 20 or 1 over x. So it's going to be 20 log to base 10 of 1 over 0 0.66, of which if you do that, you are going to get the face, the, the gain margin. And this one is always given in decibels. Don't give it in ratio form. So that one is what you are supposed to do. Again, uh, you can get the gain margin, the face margin. The, 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 we've talked about the face margin, which is uh, 180 minus the angle until where it passes, uh, the, the locus intersects the unity circle. Then the other thing that is also very, very important is the face and the gain crossover frequencies. Uh, what I want us to understand is that where we get the gain margin, we usually get the face crossover frequency because that is where it... Where we get the gain margin, we get the face crossover frequency. And where we get the face margin, we get the gain crossover frequency by simply approximating that particular frequency according to the frequencies that we were writing along the line, along the locus. Huh? So you simply look at it. Maybe if it falls between that, like that, then maybe you can talk of, like in this case here, you can talk of something like 2.1 because it is almost in the middle. Are we together? So it, it means that when we are going to get that face margin, this, is, this one was for the face, huh? so it means that here we are going to get the gain crossover frequency. The gain crossover frequency in this case is going to be, uh, we can say 2.1 rads per second. And when you come to this again, we are going to approximate. Look at what is here and what is past that. Then try to interpolate. 
to approximate that particular frequency. That is why I was uh, insisting on writing the gain cross, the gain, the, not the gain, but the frequencies along that line. Because they are the ones that are going to guide you when you will be approximating in order to obtain phase and gain crossover frequencies. Huh?